CNC spindle light. This project costs under $10 to complete depending on which version you decide to make. This is for the CNC 3018 Pro. Before we get started, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. Okay, let's get started right now. These are all the parts we're going to need. Female male plugs. The same ones that are on the back of the board of the woodpecker. Made up a nice light holder here, or light switch holder. And with that, you're absolutely going to need a switch, a two prong switch. I switched out using the difficult battery box, which I have on the back of that machine right about there, um, for one of these really cheap bought ones that have an on off switch on them. So you really don't need this when you can just turn it on and off here. A remote controlled light source. Um, I didn't use the remote, I only used the bulb out of this. This is the spindle attachment and the retainer clip to hold on to the actual light ring that bolts on here. There's also a ground strap here, so if you want to add a probe to this, you can use this in the same setup and you need two four millimeter bolts and wiring you can use whatever wire you want this is just what I decided to use it's design time this was the original design where I had an outer ring with teeth grabbing into the side and it was going to grab into the side of this guy here and then these slots here were designed to put a screwdriver in to pop them off. Uh, you'll see why we didn't go with that design. What we ended up going with is a plunger style where this guy here hooks on on the inside. Then we had to leave space here for the wires coming off of the LED. And these guys here would grip into the undercuts which are right here. Oh, right here. Here's where the undercuts are here. Uh, this wire, this channel here is to remove the chuck. This extra wire channel here is for the ground. And this wire channel right here is for the power and the ground to come off of the LED. This taper here is for airflow, to allow airflow in. So you're wondering, well, why didn't you just take the LED and glue it onto the bottom of the motor? Well, there's airflow channels in the bottom of the motor that you can't clog. And by mounting this this way here, it's very secure and it allows enough airflow in where it won't impede with the heating or cooling of the sorry, it won't impede with the cooling of the motor. Okay, let's 3D print this. So we click on our file that we want to print, pops up here. So we want to orientate to how we want our print to set up. We, this is the way we'd like to see it print, but we can't print it that way. We'd have to flip it around 180 degrees. Now we want to make sure that it's on the table, and I usually put it in the center. I'm also going to want to pick the extruder that I'm going to use. We have a dual headed extruder, so I want to pick the left extruder. And I want to add supports. I'm just going to go auto. And if we take a look, all those little boxes are where the supports are going to go. Say print. Uh, just a standard print, nothing special. And this is what our print will look like. If we zoom in, all the lines and everything's on there. All the supports are in place even supports inside the uh, wire channel here. Now let's take a look and see what this is going to look like from layer to layer. So we can go through and build up each layer one layer at a time. It's hollow on the inside as you can tell. Okay, let's start with the dismantle of this guy here. This is a $4 light at uh, the dollar store. Nothing special, but it has a light ring in it, which is kind of special. 
Don't need the remote. You can add the remote if you want, but it's just a little bit more work. All of this stuff here is garbage. Now, what I'm going to do before I start here, the positive and negative is very important. You don't mix these guys up. This is the size of the light ring. That's it. This is what emits the light. You don't want to be mixing them up. You don't want to be putting positive to the negative and negative to the positive. Okay. Um, it's just bad for the electronics. So we can cut these guys off. And that's the part that you want. Right there. Now you could also turn around and say, well, I want the remote. And what you might want to do is take this on off switch. Right here. You can use this here as one of your micro stops if you want. Okay, now that we have our light ring separated, we are going to need our switch and we're going to need two lengths of wire depending on what you're actually, where you want to place this at. I'm going to be placing my on off switch in this. It's going to mount on the end of the stepper motor and it's also going to encompass the stepper motor wires as well. So what I want to do first, as crazy as it sounds, I have to leave some of these wires exposed so that I know which one's the red and which one's the, the black or the positive and the negative wires. So I'm going to put this guy on here, leaving some of the end exposed, and I'm going to heat shrink that. Okay, let's do a quick check to make sure that this light ring works. I turned the box on, got the battery in. Um, it is quite bright. So that's incredibly bright. Okay, I'm going to pre-solder these guys a little bit, just a little bit. Only on the ends. I still want the wire as flexible as I can possibly get it. Okay. So the wire itself is still flexible. Now I'm going to heat. So now I'm going to heat and try and remove these wires. I'm just going to pull on them slightly. Now I have no real soldering experience, so if this looks a little foolish, probably is to a pro. There we go, that guy's removed. Now I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is a little plus symbol here, and there's a tiny little negative symbol there, but then I also turned around and put a touch of black magic marker there and a touch of red magic marker there, so that I can tell the difference when I go to solder them together. Professional soldering guys will look at this and go, are you kidding me? I'm doing the best I can with what I got. Okay, there you go, that's it. And those guys are on there. Now you want to be careful and you also have to bend them down and around. Here, let's move this. So we have this guy here. This guy gets bolted through first with our four millimeter bolts. This guy here is going to sit on top of here like this and the wires are going to come out the channel. So let's do this. Sorry. You guys can't see what I'm doing here unless you actually see what I'm doing. And we're going to bend these guys around, keeping them as tight as possible. Sorry. And we're going to feed it through this channel here. And that guy will sit just upon there. Then this clip here is going to go inside of here and there. So that when it's sitting down, it has clearance here. And it just pulls everything in place and centers that light ring in there. And that's your light ring that bolts on. It deforms a small amount because these ribs are pretty thin 
And also, if you take a look how this guy's tapered here, it allows airflow in and out of the motor. Okay, let's test again. Our battery pack is in the off position. So let's test again to make sure that the light works. Oh, 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 oh. Got a little <laughs> smoke action going there. I got a hot iron, so we got to be careful. So this should work when I turn the switch on. There we go. Now we won't be using the switch on the actual battery pack, but we will be using this little guy here. Okay, so now I have my wires cut here that I want to put on the back of my on-off switch. I'm not using a precision starting iron. What I'm using actually is a wood burning kit. Um, this is a wood burning kit. So what we're doing here. So I think it's a hard. I'm using a starting iron. I'm not sure if it's a little bit of a starting. And I know if you touch the plastic at all, you are going to melt plastic. And that is basically done right there. So I'm just sliding the one, sliding the one. Okay, it is very important that we don't mix our wires up. So if we take a look, the positive and negative from the light is here, which is this cable here. The signal interrupter or the on off switch is here. It's going to go from the positive to the negative back to the positive. Then from our battery tar oops, from our battery terminal, we're going to go negative. Oops, we're going to go negative and positive together. I'm just normally what you do is you'd solder this one and then you put terminals here and here to unplug them, but I'm just going to solder them all together. I think that I made the wiring look a little bit more difficult than what it actually was. So here's an easy to view schematic. Okay, here is the switch plate that I've 3D printed. So this material here, it's just filler to allow that this to print where it is. So it's easy to remove. Wires, heat shrunk. So I'm just going to take these guys, bend them down into place here. Take a little bit of electrical tape. You don't need to, but I'm going to just to make it a little bit easier. We'll turn our light switch on here. Our light comes on. So how does this fit? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this guy here, wrap this around here, and put this in with this wire set that comes out of our stepper motor. Okay, so here's your stepper motor. These wires are towards the back. All you do is just slide this guy on here. These wires will go inside of here. They'll go inside of there. And this does twofold. So that protects, there we go, that protects that, put our clamp on here. So what we do is we take a 10 millimeter nut and a 10, and a 10 millimeter bolt by 12, put it on, tighten it on. So that'll sit there just like that. And when you want your spindle light to come on, all you do is flick this button and the spindle light comes on. This is installing the spindle support onto the spindle. Okay, let's clear this up here. 
see if we can get some of this out of the way. And that's not so bad. What matters here is the undercut right in here. I don't know if you can see that or not. The undercut in there and the undercut in there. Now, the reason why is because this ring here hooks here and here into there like that. And that's basically exactly what you want to happen. And it snaps out. The original idea was this kind of ring here with all these fingers on them. Now, if this is a plastic injected tool, I didn't modify it after this. I've gone through seven versions of this. Uh, excellent, excellent situation. These are usually quite springy, but they're 3D printed and they're not springy at all. So when you go to snap these guys on here, they snap all right, they snap right off. So that's the bad thing about this. Just, they just fall right off. There's no spring to them. 3D printing is not like injection molding. Okay, let's talk about this extra wire here. This extra wire here is going to be going onto the screw, which is going to go onto and bolt into the motor here. That is going to be the ground screw for my touch off probe. So that's why that wire is on there. So as I put this guy into here, I'm hoping this is going to be the last time I assembled it, or this is the first time I'm assembling this particular one, but I hope I'm done assembling this, because every time you take it apart, you're risking breaking the wires on the LED. There we go. Push that guy all the way through. So that looks like this. This wire channel here is larger. Than the, well, there's no wire channel here at all. But this counterbore is larger to accommodate a red crimp. So I took the red piece off because it's all open anyways and just crimped the wire inside. This guy here, you take the chuck off. Now the problem is, what if you want to remove this chuck here? So that little set screw there. So what I did to help with that, rotate that around. I did accommodate that. So that is accommodated if we look here. So when we wrote, put that guy on, when we rotate this guy here, I don't know if we can see that, that guy lines up there. Even with the LED down, I don't want to put it down yet until I actually screw it on. Um, this year, you still be able to get that chuck off even with the LED ring on. So when you put this on the one time, you'll never have to take it off again. So then you just get Allen keys, screw these guys in. Let me get my Allen key set. Okay, now this wire here needs to line up with this channel in here, okay? There's lots of room, but if it's over on this side, you're going to have to take it apart and do it over again. A lot of thought actually went into doing this. So I'm using a 3 mil on a 4 mil socketed cap screw. None of these have to be super tight, they just need to be tight enough not to fall off. Okay, so if you look here, all of the air channels whoops, are still open. We're going to push our LED down and over. Now if we take a look here, these two grooves here are on a 45. Now the reason why this guy stands up is because you need to make clearance for the wires coming out of your LED. So this guy can go on this way or it can go on this way, it doesn't matter. So you pinch a little bit, don't push down too hard, pinch a little bit, compress, and jiggle. There we 
go. That guy snaps in, and that LED, it's free, but it's it's tight. It's not moving anywhere. So that guy is ready to go now. There we go. Our wire's here. Now people say, well, Ray, how do you know that's going to fit? Well, I do, because I tried it already. Get some of these junk ones out of the way here. So when I put this guy in here, I'm going to set it up like this because it's easier for me to manipulate. But when I talk about it, I'll set it down here. This guy here, this channel here, in combined with the depth, will give you clearance for inside there. So I'm going to take my screwdriver. I'm going to pry this guy open. And I'm going to slide this guy in. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees here. Helps if I had a third hand. Pry open, slide in, slide in, there we go. Got rid of my Allen key a little too quickly. I know what you're saying. Does this actually work, Ray? Let me get a battery source. Keep in mind, it's going to be much brighter when I'm finished with my official battery pack for this thing. It'll be probably 50% brighter, believe it or not. It's going to be super bright. You won't miss any action at all. If you stuck around this long, I'm sure you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or you have any comments, please leave them in the comments section below. And also, if you have any ideas for future projects, leave them in the comments section below as well. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you could, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. All you have to do is click on the icon on my face and I'll do the rest. Thanks for watching the video. Have a great night.